According to the regional manager of the Department of Tourism, Mr Mick Crawley, the major recommendation of the strategy is to develop three extensive tourist trails. One each for historic attractions, economic sites and natural features. The trails would be a way for travel agents to package the hunter's tourist attractions. And the document says developers should create facilities to fit in with one or all three of the trails. The newly formed Tourist Authority will attempt to promote the industry according to the strategy. The department, meanwhile, has been allocated $10 million for the plan and is seeking expressions of interest from developers. Mr Crawley says these initiatives are overdue. While we have a very rich and diverse set of attractions, there's no great linking together of them. They've not, at times, been clearly identified or linked and marketed as effectively as what they should have been. Does it's the hunter really have a tourist attention? Yes, but, well that's been proved in the past. It was outside Sydney, the largest uh, visitation by region in the state. But over the last three years it's dropped quite significantly. As part of the promotion of the hunter, will it be necessary to change Newcastle's image? Part of the development strategy that we're talking about does address that question as well. That there is a need to educate our own residents primarily as to what they've got to offer and what a beautiful place we live in and secondly to change the image of Newcastle as it's perceived by people outside the region. Castle branch of the Civil Rehabilitation Committee offers many forms of support for prisoners, as well as arranging visits by friends and family, the group also offers emotional support for prisoners and their relatives. In addition, the group offers to help people who are facing court cases, and to prisoners who have been released from jail and need help to readjust to normal life. The Newcastle branch was re-established in 1982 and has received a lot of support from community and church groups. About 30 people attended today's seminar, which was addressed by local magistrate, Mr Rex Meehan, as well as organisers of the support group. The purpose of today's seminar was to recruit new volunteers to help the group cope with its workload. On the bell, we were away for, well, a number of the Some of the great surprises of the Monday, and then two days and nights of wine and two seconds of all the prize went to David Sayers. The prize, well, that goes without saying. The organizers are expecting a big roll out this week and a gearing according to the market. Most of the companies that are here will have brand new releases, a lot of them never available to the public before, and they'll be launched here. Uh, some of the ones that have won medals at recent wine shows. Uh, I think it'll be a very interesting experience. Well, last year's was uh, termed uh, a great success. What did you learn from that? 
Well, we learned that uh, Newcastle people are interested in wine. They want to know more about them. Uh, they're keen to uh, learn more about the Hunter Valley, particularly some of the smaller vineyards. That uh, I think people learned that there are vineyards that they didn't even know were there, and they found they contacted them here, and as a result, the vineyards got a lot more visitors. So. And so, I, I gather this will be an annual event now. Definitely, yes. It's been a huge success. happens to be captain of the Bonnells Bay Bushfire Brigade, went to a forest fishing mission auction at Awaba on Saturday and spotted a lot labelled as a poison gas cart and gas cylinders. He thought the cart would make a good tool trolley and he could use the cylinders for LP gas. So he bought the lot for $30. When he got home, he found two cylinders were still full of gas. Fortunately, he thought he should check on the properties of the gas before releasing it. He rang in the end for advice. A somewhat astounded expert then warned us that the gas was extremely toxic. Mm. The nerve gas can even be absorbed through the skin. Amazingly, the forestry department was auctioning off its old metal bromide gear once used for soil sterilisation because it considered it too dangerous to use even with protective clothing. The sheet found inside the car, dated 1974, refers to safety precautions previously issued but didn't say what they were. Well, I just wanted the bottle for putting the, on the gas in them, actually, for the stoves and that, you know. So were you actually going to let the gas go so you could empty them out? Well, I wasn't going to let it go until I found out just what was in them. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm. Were you given any specific warning on how dangerous methyl bromide is? Uh, no, nothing was mentioned about that. Nothing uh, about what was in them contained or gas or what, you know, and... Uh, uh, I'm the captain of a fire brigade and I uh, looked it up to see if it was explosive actually. That was the main concern, explosive. But no. you didn't realise that it was a highly toxic substance? No, no, I didn't. The explanation the spokesman of the forestry department said no one had realised the serum was still full of gas and that arrangements would be made for them to be disposed. This whole incident could easily have had fatal consequences. If Errol Mutant had been someone else, perhaps not in the fire brigade, not used to dealing with substances that could be explosive, he mightn't have checked, might have vented these to the atmosphere, and could easily have killed himself and somebody else. Again, it underlines the need for a general tightening of regulations covering dangerous gases, dangerous substances. All too often, they're just treated too carelessly. The Australian super bantamweight or featherweight title fight scheduled for tonight is off and running after today's weigh-in. Both fighters were exactly 55 kilograms with a limit of 55.4. Any doubts about it not being a title fight were dispelled by the national president of the Professional Boxers Association, Paul Moore. It is recognised by the Department of Sport and Recreation as an Australian title fight. It has received recognition recognition of the Australian Professional Boxing Association of Australia as, uh, as a title fight. What more can you ask as the champion uh, defending his title against, against the former champion? Defending champion and local boy Craig Treaty 
says he's ready, despite the controversy of last week. I have no doubt. How's the foot racing going? Foot racing's going good. and weight right. Training. I'm as fit as I can. I think I can get now. So. It's on tonight. You've got to prove it tonight. Yeah. A unanimous decision on points after 12 rounds last time. What are you going to predict for tonight's fight? Oh, I hope. I don't think it'll go to 12 rounds this time. I'd say eight rounds. Challenger and former champion Jimmy Bowen of Sydney is not predicting anything other than that he is right for this contest. Yeah, it made the weight easy. Uh, I still feel strong. I'm punching harder than I used to before. I've been doing a lot of weight work. So I, uh, I'm not overconfident, but reason, uh, reasonably confident. Will it go the distance? I don't know. I don't like to predict. A return to the Philippines is next on Peavy's calendar, but only if he's the champion. We're flying back to Manila on August, sometime in August. Yeah, having one fight there and then down to Korea in September. It's important that you're the Australian champion at that point in time. Yeah, I have to be there or I won't go, I don't know. For the many queries, the Newcastle Taxation Office will once again conduct their after hours phone service from the 16th of July to the 8th of August. Most calls received so far have been from pensioners, unsure whether they're still obliged to fill out the return. Pensioners whose income exceeds $5,429 still have to lodge a return while the cut-off point for tax exemption for the rest of the community is $4,595. But as the manager of the Newcastle Office of the Department of Taxation, Mr Greg Jeffrey, explains, there are many more changes um, that taxpayers have to remember this year. The dividend rebate and the health insurance rebates will no longer apply from the 1st of July 1983. The home loan interest rebate will be limited to first home owners. The Medicare levy will be payable this year and will be calculated at 0.41 to 6 percent of a resident tax base taxable income. The concessional expenditure threshold has been increased from $15.90 to $2,000. Um, the spouse rebate this year will be increased from $963 to $1,030 if a taxpayer has a dependent or student child. The uh, good news for the pensioner in the sense that the pensioner rebate has been increased from $157 to $250 and the sole parent rebate has been increased from $713 to $780. This morning, the eight degree temperatures brought out the coats, scarves and gloves, but the folks further inland were feeling even cooler conditions. At Oberon, a blanket of snow fell overnight, covering the town and the surrounding hills. At Tamworth, snow fell for the first time in 17 years, luring people up the slippery road to the surrounding hills for a play in the snow. Canberra also suffered the blistery cold with light falls of snow in the capital's outer suburbs. In Victoria, snowfalls were reported from Mount Maston to northern Melbourne suburbs. The Melbournians had to rug up for the coldest day in eight years. South Australia also coped with gale force winds, which uprooted trees and wrecked sheds. The freezing conditions have been caused by a cold southwesterly airstream, which has moved across the southern part of the continent. Decision on that. Alderman but John Tate wants the City there Council is to investigate a scheme operating in Victoria which involves building small, highly trained units in backyards for aged persons. 
They are established on site at a low cost and can be dismantled for use elsewhere. Do you think the concept of a hardy tank construction in one's backyard would be a popular one? I think it would be. It's not something that would occur in every yard, of course, but uh, for those people that can make use of this idea, I think it would be uh, very well accepted. And even with modest uh, landscaping, I don't see it being an intrusion at all. Picking winners Based from the, the totally enthusiastic Turn Falcons was obviously not an easy job. Judges resorted to statistics to arrive at Jim Bateman as the season's top rebounder, with an average of nine per game. The lengthy Jim, originally from New York and now a naturalised Australian, was also voted the team's most valuable player. When it came to deciding the team's best defensive player, NBN's Red Davis, responsible for directing TV coverage of the basketball game, referred to some other numbers. Noting that Ian Billiard, a top defensive player, scored 94 fouls in the season. Showing you can't be Mr. Nice Guy and a good defensive player. The award for the most oh, improved player went to Stuart Ben. Ben with a general air of goodwill all round. A number of awards and certificates to arrive from Newcastle's sister city in the United States are taken. One of them, a proclamation from the California State Assembly commending the marching koalas for their visit to Arcadia and their contribution to international understanding and friendship. The proclamation was received by reservation. Nice of his over, though, it was Alderman Vic Bell who sparked a lively response from Labor Alderman when he moved an amendment to a Policy and Priority Committee recommendation on the Lord Mayoral allowance. Alderman Bell wanted half the allowance paid to the Deputy Lord Mayor. That half being deducted from the Lord Mayor's allowance while she is prevented by illness from performing her normal duties. Yes. Alderman yes. Rigby yes. made an emotional yes. response. Yes. Right, put it back. But this is a nasty, a filthy bit of stuff that's ever been chucked into this town. And by Christ, that is really saying something. And why don't we get on to run this town and forget about this silly sort of situation? Everybody seems to be happy with this, uh, what's happening, but no, nah, you've got it. Up, up, and up, and up. And up. What are we going to do now? Send it back to Queen Cleary. And then come back here and send it back to Queen Cleary. I'm absolutely disgusted with Deputy Lord Mayor and I thought, I really, I thought it would be a better than this one. Deputy Lord Mayor Jennings asked Council to note that he wasn't getting involved in any discussions on the matter. The vote later saw Alderman Bell's amendment blocked. Now we vote, sir. Uh, been the centre of controversy for more than a week with the Australian Boxing Federation threatening to strip him of the title if he went ahead with last night's fight without an ABF appointed judge or referee. Regardless of the threat, the fight went on and Peavy made easy work of his opponent, Jimmy Bowen. 
The bout went five rounds with Peavy knocking Bowen down in each. But the big news today is Peavy's decision to leave Australia and continue his campaign for the world title in the Philippines. He leaves next month for a crack at the Philippines title and if he wins there, he's been promised a shot at the Orient Pacific title, putting him within striking distance of a world title fight. Peavy is one of Australia's brightest hopes in boxing and part of the reason he's leaving Australia is the trouble he's had from the ABF. Mainly going back there just to polish my skills off. I get that experience and that. And then when I come back here, they about to take my title and that off me. So I'll be glad to get back there and get out of here. school boys team in the blue won its way into the quarter-finals of the Commonwealth Games Cup with a solid 1-0 victory over last year's runners-up, Kadena High. Lismore's Kadena High team went into the match's favourite with a strong side featuring two state combined high schools representatives. But in a hard-fought game, Whitebridge's goal scored midway through the first half by striker Bernard Ryan was good enough for victory. Kadena fought back in the second half and were unlucky not to equalise when a shot hit the bar. Whitebridge now go on to play North Sydney High in the quarter-final in Sydney in a fortnight. In the girls' Karingai Cup match at Federal Park Walls End today, local team Walls End were just not strong enough and went down to Tamworth Oxley High School 7-1. Oxley in the yellow were runners-up in last year's competition. Walls End were runners-up in this year's Hunter Regional Final and today's loss ended a winning streak that saw the team make it beyond the first round for the first time.